Good morning, Angela here at So Bright Our Fine Quilting. We're here today for the Greater International Craft Show, thanks to Craft Alive. And this morning I'm going to talk about this gorgeous quilt behind me called Lucy. Uh, this is designed by GE Designs and it uh, makes great use of a 10 inch square or a layer cake. Oh, Steve's telling me my top's making the film go funny, so I'll have to try and stand here closed. Um, so this one here we've made with a junior layer cake from the Ruby Star Society. This one is called Airflow from Sasha Ignatio, Nignatiado. I can never ever pronounce her name. I'm sorry, Sasha, if I can, don't pronounce your name correctly. But it um, has some great little designs, as you can see, and they've all got some little um, metallic accent on them. So some great little designs, a bit of a Japanese feel, and we've teamed it up with this Ruby Star Speckle in Teal, which we have on the bolt. Um, so this is uh, smaller than the crib size, which is the smallest pattern in the pattern. You can make it in uh, several sizes. So it has crib, throw, lap, full, queen, and king, depending on how many squares you use. So a, um, a lap quilt uses 40 squares, which is two of these and about three meters of the speckle. And we've got a kit to put together for that for the show for about $226.48 off the top of my head. Michelle Martin. Hi, Michelle. Kit arrived on Monday. The kid arrived. Fantastic. Monday, Monday. Oh, it will arrive on Monday. Very good. I hope to see uh, some progress shots of it soon and hopefully this will help you get cutting out. So I thought I'd just cut out a couple of blocks for you and I've got a couple up here that were left over and you can see that it's it actually is a little, lot easier than what it looks. It looks more complicated than what it is. Uh, so as I said, it starts with a 10 inch square. So I've cut a couple out here in this uh, Juicy Juice fabric and uh, Zanzibar. So we start with a 10 inch square. You can use any 10 inch ruler or a smaller, a larger ruler, but the 10 inch works well because it's the same size as the square and it makes it a little bit easier. Kate Wakefield. Kate, Kate Wakefield. Ah, hello Kate. Um, in the pattern, uh, Gudrun uses the Stripology ruler which has the slats in it. I don't have that one, but she also is kind enough to give us instructions on how to do it without that ruler. So the first thing we do is we have to cut two strips off the side. And in the pattern it will tell you their measurements. So we cut one off one side, flip that around, cut another one off the other side. And then we away and we should have a square with this one sorry I should make sure that's the right size square yes and then we just have to take a little bit off of this one and then we have our pieces already so that's easy cutting out so we take this one and we put this fabric here fabric here and this one has this one and this one so we take them to the sewing machine and we sew them together so we get this square so then we have two squares and then this is where the magic happens and when you press them you've got to make sure that you press them in opposite directions so that when we lay them on top of each other the seams will nest and by nesting, I mean that the seams will go in opposite directions and it will help the squares sit flat as we cut them. So we make sure they're both lined up. Well, the other big tip that I can give you is um, when you're sewing these first initial seams, make sure you use a quite small stitch, so about a 2.2, 2 .2, no bigger than 2.2, 2.5, because we're going to slice through here. And when you press them, use a uh, stabiliser like a Best Press or um, Fabulon if you have it, just to give it a bit of firmness because once we cut here, we're going to have 
a, um, our diagonal seams and we're going to have uh, our fabric cut on the cross. So we get another ruler. I like to use this one is my favorite one, which is the eight inch by 14 inch. And this one has a handy line right in the spot that I need it to help me line up my corners. Slice through there. Move it over again and slice through there. And then we take this one out. And we have this one. And this one. With this one. Oh, they're in the other way. So then we have three pieces that we need to sew back together. And when you sew these, just make sure that you use pins because we have uh, now have bias stretchy seams and that you match your centers. So it's just an, a matter of flipping that one over, lining it up with the edges of the fabric, making sure we've got everything centered pop a few pins in, take it to the machine and sew them together. And then they will look like this one. So then they'll look like this. And then we will take our square again and we will square them up. And then they'll look like this, nice and square. And you can rearrange them uh, in the pattern. There's several different ways that you can arrange them you can see on the cover you've got um, this sort of square in the square you've got a, um, a ziggy zaggy sort of look and then on the back you've got a, another one that's radiating out from the center and then you've got the way that we've um, laid them out on the sample that we're showing you today This is an, also another good use for your design wall. So it makes it nice and easy to um, lay out your pieces. You can rearrange them, get them in the order that you want them. And um, as a reminder, this is the calf facet uh, flannel grid. It has a two inch grid. And we have this uh, for today, for the weekend in 1.4 meter pieces for $42. Uh, it's, they're great, I love it. This one here, this one here I take with me on um, when I go to shows, to pop-up shops. And then I have another piece on the wall above the sewing machine if Steve wants to show you that one. So if I'm working on something at the sewing machine, I can sew it, press it and hang it up. And then um, as I do each piece, I can put them on the board and arrange them how I like. So this afternoon we'll be back uh, to talk about English paper piecing. I'll show you our latest English paper piecing design and give you some tips and tricks and hints for English paper piecing and show you the tools that we like to use. Thanks for watching. See you at 2pm. Bye bye.